Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse might be my favorite movie of the year because I cannot possibly think of another movie coming out that might even be capable of rivaling this one. I had really high expectations considering how amazing I thought Into the Spider-Verse was and even though I always advise against setting expectations super high, Across the Spider-Verse not only met those expectations but it just completely went above and beyond anything I could have imagined and I'm not even exaggerating that much. It's that good. As far as the plot goes, I was completely enthralled with it and truly believed that the story here is way more captivating than its predecessor. Not that Into the Spider-Verse's plot was anything bad, but I just found myself falling in love with how the plot unraveled and the journey that this movie took me through. We get a much deeper story with Miles and Gwen in this one, especially Gwen. She gets a lot more development here than she did in the last movie, and so much so that at some points this felt as much her movie as it did did for Miles. The villain in this movie is really interesting as well. We get introduced to him pretty early on and when we first meet him he's kind of a joke and I didn't take him seriously at all. But what made him so interesting was how he changed and evolved the longer the movie went on and he basically goes from like a literal joke of a character to like an actual major threat as he learns more and more about how his powers work. And this isn't something that kind of happens randomly either. He is very much a character that is essentially created by the actions and choices of other characters, like the main characters. And that was extremely refreshing to see after time and time again, we keep getting villains who just kind of show up out of nowhere, who exclaim their desires for destruction or world domination. Like we don't get that in this movie. Th this shit without giving anything away, this is very personal. This is a very personal thing, and that alone not only makes him a great villain, but an amazing character. We get a proper introduction to a new, very unique Spider-Man, Spider-Man 2099, who is a standout character. He's voiced by Oscar Isaac, who, if I didn't know, was already voicing this character beforehand, I absolutely would have not known that it was that it was him. His acting in this movie is like legitimately incredible. There is a shift in focus towards making this more of a narrative driven story than just some cool looking action scenes and like don't get me wrong there are plenty of action scenes as well and they're just as incredible partly due to how well animated they are like some of these action sequences are pretty long as well and that is such a feat of its own considering how intense these action scenes get and when i do mean intense i i really do mean intense like i was actually like sitting on the edge of my seat and i, I know that sounds like a little ridiculous but but it's true and we can't talk about this movie without talking about the animation the animation in across the spider verse is on a whole nother level whatever the animation was in the first one is greatly improved upon on this one and they even played around with mixing up and basically clashing a lot of animation styles against one another and, and it looks so f cool like one of the most visually interesting characters we get to see in this one is called spider punk who at, at some point looked like his animation style was changing like almost every second and it was like a visual like eye candy to me the animation style just doesn't stop with like how the characters are designed but the backgrounds and the environments as well whenever we go to like a different universe it's extremely clear that we are somewhere else based solely on how the environment looks like it really feels like we are in another universe and i feel like that distinction is really important for a movie about jumping around different universes backgrounds feel like they are alive at some points this is especially true whenever we get like a few scenes with gwen where the background like the color and the lighting keep complementing the mood of the scene also like just like into the spider-verse across the spider-verse has a pretty damn good soundtrack the the music complements their scenes nicely and they have like this nice flow with each other like the scenes and the music uh this movie is like also around like 40 ish minutes longer than and into the Spider-Verse, which is kind of bold considering how much time and effort goes into the animation. 
fine. But despite this movie being like over two hours, it, it really goes by sort of fast. This does not feel like an almost two and a half hour movie. Uh, the pacing is really that good. There isn't really a scene that drags or has me bored out of my mind. Every bit of this movie is used perfectly for what they wanted to do. And that's really f***ing impressive. This movie is almost a perfect movie. Almost. I, I do think that there is like something in here that a lot of people might not like. A and this is where we do kind of need to cross into some minor spoiler territory. And I won't be giving anything like huge away or anything specific, but if you do want to go into this movie completely blind, and I would encourage that, uh, then you should stop watching this now and come back after you finish watching the movie. All right, now that that's out of the way, let's talk about the ending of this movie. I do believe that a lot of people might not be too fond of the ending because it very much leaves you wanting more. It kind of leaves off during a major stepping stone where the movie begins to get really, really interesting. Ki kind of a cliffhanger, but not really. Like, personally, I did not mind this at all. I actually kind of like that this is how it ended. If you've read comic books before, this movie's ending kind of feels like it's a page turner, but like at the end of the issue. It makes me want to watch more, and it did for everybody in my audience as well. Like, people actually cried out like no whenever the credits like started rolling because they really did not want it to end, and, and I get that. I really didn't want this movie to end. I was enjoying the ride it was taking me on so very much, but I'm now really looking forward to what lies beyond, and I don't feel like a movie making you want more is a bad thing. That's kind of the point of like cliffhangers, but I understand if you don't like that, so if you go watch Across the Spider-Verse and don't really f*** with the ending, that's totally okay. Overall, this is legitimately one of the best movies I've ever seen, and it's totally fine if you don't think it is, but I love this movie. It feels very personal despite the grand scale of everything that is happening around the characters. The issues they face are very personal to the individual, and not only having one of the best narratives I've seen in a very, very long time, but to also have some of the most stylistic visual beautiful animation doesn't just make Across the Spider-Verse great, it makes it spectacular.